we're in a privileged position in a, in a great industry and in a great market. A lot of people lose sight of the fact that Mexico is the 11th economy in the world. You know, even at current growth rates, it would still take a long time for places like China and India to meet the current income levels of Mexico. Right now, a lot of these other countries have received so much hype that they're overvalued. And I think that that presents great opportunities for companies to come here in Mexico and establish cost-efficient new business centers. When you look at Mexico's competitive advantages, first it has the U.S. as a trading partner. When we look at Mexico's government, the way that they've managed free trade, for example, they've signed agreements with more than 40 countries worldwide. So setting up operations in Mexico becomes a perfect place to reach out to the world. We had to be here because it's a huge opportunity. The country of Mexico is quickly becoming the most prominent economic power in Latin America. With its ideal location just south of the United States and its cheap yet considerably skilled labor, it is the target of trade and foreign direct investment from many developed countries. Mexico has a population of over 114 million people, less than half of that of the United States. Mexico's GDP, $1.2 trillion, is the second largest in Latin America. Trade alone makes up approximately 60% of Mexico's GDP. In 2011, their trade deficit has decreased by more than 50% because of their growth in trade. Mexico is a large exporter of goods such as petroleum, motor vehicles, TV receivers, motor parts, and other machinery. Nearly 80% of their exports are shipped to the United States, and they receive nearly half of their imports from U.S. exports. The North American Free Trade Agreement, more commonly known as NAFTA, has defined Mexico's trade policies since it was established January 1, 1994. NAFTA was created to eliminate any trade barriers, remove barriers to investment, and protect intellectual property rights of the three North American countries. Before NAFTA was established, the United States and Canada were not able to trade with Mexico easily. Tariffs facing goods from the United States were on average 150% higher than tariffs on goods from other countries. Mexico also implemented many non-tariff barriers to those trying to transport products across the border, frustrating U.S. and Canadian producers. FDI from Mexico's northern neighbors was also non-existent. Before NAFTA, Mexico was a country searching for economic growth. Policymakers knew of the importance of free trade and the benefits brought on by their comparative advantage in most labor-intensive markets. However, Mexico suffered from high poverty. In 1992, over half the population lived in poverty. There was little to no investment within the country. The Mexican economy was very volatile due to several crises such as the assassination of a presidential candidate and a severe devaluation of their currency as NAFTA was being implemented. After Mexico opened its borders with the United States and Canada, it has seen a modest amount of economic growth. Mexican exports to the United States have quadrupled since NAFTA from 60 to 280 billion dollars per year. FDI in Mexico has also increased by 40%. Agricultural exports of produce not strongly subsidized by the United States government have tripled in size. Foreign direct investment in Mexico has also been very beneficial to Mexican labor forces. However, NAFTA was not as beneficial to Mexico as it might seem. The benefits to the three countries were far from equal. Mexico's GDP has risen at an average rate of 2.7% annually, which is much lower than the US and Canada. Additionally, while wages have increased for Mexico as a whole, these gains are mainly concentrated within regions that had already experienced foreign direct investment prior to NAFTA. As a result, the income disparity within Mexico has increased between these regions. Perhaps the largest negative impact to the Mexican economy has been the collapse of much of the agricultural industry. Because the United States government subsidizes most of its domestically produced agriculture, farmers are able to sell their products at low prices both in the United States and in Mexico. As NAFTA was being established, the Mexican government created a fund that would go to its domestic farmers. After NAFTA began, however, this was never the case. Because Mexican farmers were never subsidized for their products, they could not compete with the low prices and technology of the American farmers, driving 80% of them out of business. Here's a short video to better understand what's going on. Well, so what we found was that in the case of corn, um, corn was going into Mexico at 19% below the cost of production in the nine-year period we looked at, 90, 1997 to 2005. And that cost Mexican corn farmers $6.6 .6 billion over nine years. That's $700 million a year. And if you figure it out on a 
uh, a per acre basis, um, just sort of what, is, what does that mean to a Mexican farmer. It's more than the value of the basic Mexican subsidy program um, to those farmers. So it's a devastating loss, um, and one that, um, that, that um, is clearly uh, owes to U.S. policy. So you have, you have public money used to help subsidize American agribusiness, we're then dumping products, destroying Mexican agriculture, so they're making money on both ends because they're right. capturing the Mexican market. That's right, and it wasn't just corn. I mean, we found overall that the, the cost to Mexican farmers um, uh, were $12.8 billion over this nine-year period. And to put that in perspective, from the uh, development perspective for Mexico, um, that's $1.4 billion a year. That's more than the value of the entire uh, tomato export market from Mexico to the United States, NAFTA's greatest agricultural success story, and 10% of the value of the entire, uh, Mexico's entire set of agricultural exports to the United States. So it's a huge loss um, for, for Mexico. Immigration has also been a defining aspect of Mexico's economy. Immigration to the United States in search of higher wages has been a part of many lower class Mexican families for decades. In 2005, there were about 12 million Mexican immigrants in the United States, and more than half were in the country illegally. The amount of immigrants from Mexico to the U.S. seems to vary directly with the U.S. business cycle. Immigration was very common until the most recent recession, which sent migrants back to Mexico due to the lack of available jobs. However, as the U.S. has begun exiting the recession, migration rates are increasing once again. According to Rodolfo Tuiran, Secretary General of the Mexican National Population Council in 2000, 16% of Mexican households had direct ties to immigration in the U.S. These migrant workers have been sending remittances back to their families in Mexico when they are able to. These remittances are going exclusively to the lower class where these migrants come from. Organizations such as the World Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank have credited the rising income level of the Mexican lower class to these remittances coming from the U.S. However, these remittances to Mexico have seen a decline in recent years. This is due to many migrant workers settling in the United States and then bringing their families from Mexico to start new lives in the U.S. Mexico is facing a few major problems that could define their economic future. Due to the increase in violence by Mexican drug cartels, Mexico is beginning to be considered a dangerous country. Since President Felipe Calderon declared war on drug cartels in 2006, there have been more than 50,000 deaths linked to drug violence, a figure given out by the Mexican government, but highly disputed. The tourism industry has been affected the most by the dangers presented by these cartels. Even though popular tourist cities are not affected, potential tourists still fear the images seen in the news. Walmart is not without their slew of corrupted government issues as well. For example, back in 2005, a scandal was unfolding in Walmart of Mexico that dealt with accusations of bribery to the Mexican government, giving Walmart land permits to build more stores. Walmart is the largest retailer and distributor in Mexico, with nearly one of every four Walmarts being located within Mexico's borders. These accusations were hidden by Walmart higher-ups and didn't come to the public's attention until April of 2012. Walmart stocks have plummeted over the past six months. And the question as to why in Mexico, and we would tie the development to the comparative advantage that Mexico has in labor. Walmart offers lower priced goods for everyone to take advantage of, and the low cost of labor drives business forward. Mexico will be able to prosper further by increasing the amount of investment toward human capital and infrastructure. Mexico should also develop better economic policies designed to encourage internal demand within their own economy, instead of solely depending on foreign countries. By implementing these policies, Mexico will gain more credibility and a more sustainable economy internationally. As a country, we see Mexico as being a great example of what foreign trade can do. In terms of their GDP, Mexico has grown over the past five years, and in terms of unemployment, their rate has dropped and is projected to continue dropping over the next four years. Their average income per capita has increased, and they continue to be a major part of the World Trade Organization.